Sasha Johnson, good morning. Good morning, good morning, power to you, King. How are you today and what are you doing in Kennington Park? I'm very well today. Today I'm here for the black formation, black unity, black pride and black dignity. You can fool some people sometimes, but you can fool all the people all the time. But now we see the light. What are we going to do? Stand up for your rights. So oh. Clive is going to be running on the Take the Initiative for the position in Enfield here. And I'm here to support Clive, do the footwork with him and to also see what the community is like and to see what changes I see in the community that needs and what we could do to wake up some of the black men and women in the community. We are now beginning to be the writers of our history. That was, we're taking back what was taken from us. We're now writing our own history. So get Good morning all. My name is Wendell Daniel and welcome to Street Mike. And today we are coming to you live and direct from outside of the Central Criminal Court in London, better known as the Old Bailey, where four young gentlemen will be appearing accused of conspiracy to murder Sasser Johnson. I'm the UK's leader of the New Black Panther Party. I'm also the leader of BLM Oxford. I've agonised, I've got to be honest, I've agonised about what I'm going to tell you today. People have taken the opportunity to go to the hospital to see Sasha uh, and then report immediately back to everybody else and kind of following this almost ego type driven stuff. And one of the things that Sasha said regularly um, was death to ego. I believe in death to ego. Power to the people. Because, you know, nothing can be achieved if ego is in the way, you know, and that, that, that is true of what we try to do as a people, but equally in, in politics, you know, as Clive will know only too well. Big up Street Mike. Big up Street Mike, long time, long time. <laughs> Big up Street Mike. Give him the thumbs up, like, comment, share, and also click the notification bell so when he goes live, you will be able to be there. So what I can tell you, if you haven't heard it already, is that you know she's a, she's alive and well because there have been rumours that she had passed. She hasn't passed. She's alive. Um, she has been responding to um, to commands. She's been responding to to touch. Um, I've had one of my friends who has been blessed with the opportunity to actually go in and see her. Um, she gasped as, she, as he came into the room and I like to hope this because he was she was aware of his presence um, which is fantastic news what we do at the moment is we take you know we take heart that she has survived you know that she's alive and that and this is where I come on to the TTIP stuff I went to court on the 25th of June and I was you know given the opportunity to represent the family in court because one of the things I made plain is the state does not represent Sasha. She's not represented by the state. So she's represented by you and I in what we do, whether that be by libation and drumming and going to the park as a number of people in this room uh, did for you know, a long time and are still doing to this day, going to the park um, by King's College Hospital there, um, but also by going to the court. When I went to the court, I came out of court and I spoke to a man who turns out is the father of one of the defendants. And what I made plain to him, and I want to make plain to you now, is that, you know, as, as an individual, I'm not speaking as somebody who's a member of a political party, I'll come to that in a second. I said to him, look, I don't care whether these people are black, white or Smurfs, you know, as long as the right people have been arrested for this crime. Um, it really makes no odds, because at the end of the day, one of the things that happens all too often in the black community is that people are swept up, and, and I don't know if you know, some of you may know, you may not know. Sasha was shot in the early hours of the Sunday morning on the 23rd of, of May, and it was by the Tuesday that one defendant had been arrested, and it wasn't by intelligence-led policing, it was by coincidence that he was stopped and searched in South East London, and he was subsequently arrested and charged with conspiracy to murder. One of the things that was being peddled out there was that there was no conspiracy and Sasha wasn't a target. All I will say is she wore a stud-proof vest. It's still in my possession to this day. You don't wear a stud-proof vest for fun, you, you know, uh, unless you're kind of not well. Um, Sasha's very well um, and she wore it because she was concerned. But one of the things I wanted to say as well, just about, um, and I know I'm kind of going all, all over the place, but I wanted to make this plain because 
it doesn't come out enough. A lot of people will peddle the rumor that Sasha is racist, that she wants to enslave white people, she wants to do this, she wants to do that. And I want to dispel that myth right here and right now. Because one of the things that I put on social media was um, an incident. I don't know if you get a chance to see it. It's on Facebook. I was driving to central London with Sasha. She was driving her own vehicle when she spotted a man on the road who had actually, as it turned out, he'd been knocked down. He'd, it was a hit and run. He was a white man. And it turns out that the uh, person he said hit him was also a white man. Now, that doesn't matter. What matters is that two things sprung to my mind at the time when Sasha insisted that we stop to help this white man. Let me say that again. She insisted that we stop to help this white man. But yet, people peddle this narrative that she's a racist and she wants to enslave white people, right? Nonsense. We stopped and what she did was she got a, a, um, a cardigan from the boot of her car and she put it under this man's head. It's all on the film. And I filmed it because I was concerned about what would happen when the police arrived and, and my, you know, my, uh, my concerns were valid because the first thing they said was, were you the driver? When they pointed at Sasha and I said, no, she wasn't. <laughs> no, she wasn't. Uh, and then the other thing that I was concerned about was Sasha's safety because it was about 11 o'clock or so at night. And actually what we were doing was going, don't mind saying, we were going to look for a friend of Sasha's who she hadn't seen for three days and she was concerned about because she hadn't heard from that person for three days and it was abnormal. So in passing, she saw this guy on the floor and we decided we were gonna stop and we were gonna offer some assistance. The other thing, you know, um, and I will, I'll, I'll just share this if I may. Um, there was an occasion where before Sasha found the flat, which we've actually now, you know, that's quite painful. We had to empty that flat um, a couple of months ago because she's not going to be moving back there. Um, but while she was living in London, she stayed in a, a, a hotel. Nothing fantastic, but, you know, uh, it was OK for, for her and the children. And um, we came out of the hotel one day and bumped into a guy again. He happened to be white and it doesn't matter that he was white. What matters is the human impact of what Sasha then did. What she did was said to this guy, are you hungry? And she went and bought him some food. She gave him some money, I think it was 20 pounds. I put my hand out and asked where mine was um, and uh, bought him some coffee, you know, because that's the kind of person that she you was. You and I were both at the Old Bailey when um, a number of gentlemen were in attendance and they were charged with conspiracy to murder. We were told that the trial date was set mm. for bonfire night on the 5th of um, November. Mm -hmm. You've now said it, the trial is going to be on the, um, in the new year, January. Can you maybe explain? Yeah, no, so right, okay, so that's probably my fault because what, what happened at the last hearing is the judge said that there would be a case management hearing and that would take place on the 5th of November, which is spot on. But what he wanted to do on the 5th of November is set the trial date on the 5th of November, which he then said would be up to six weeks. Um, the trial was always going to be the new year because the custody time limits run out in January and February, but they have to set the custody time limit, uh, sorry, they have to set the trial date so that the custody time limit doesn't run out, in which case, if the custody time limit had run out, then potentially people would just get released without charge. But now we see the light, what are we going to do? Stand up for your right, all together now. Big up street mic. Big up street mic, long time, long time. <laughs> Big up Street Mike, give him the thumbs up, like, comment, share and also click the notification bell so when he goes live you will be able to be there. Keep on doing the great work, you're creating awareness, you're Big, Big up, up Street Mike, Big up, up Street Mike. Click your notification bell.